I'm pleased to recognize the member for Thornhill. Thank you very much, Speaker. And, uh, I, I must say, Speaker, first of all, although this is not the time for questions and comments, I would like to add my voice in congratulating our new friend from Scarborough Guildwood on her excellent maiden speech. I, I want you to trust me when I say that when you're a few years down the road and a little longer in the tooth, uh, you won't be quite so wide-eyed, but I think that those are good precepts to keep in mind. If we could all come to work uh, every day here and, and be a little less jaded, I guess it would be a better place. In any event, I got a call uh, at my office last week from uh, the people who are responsible for legislative affairs in our party asking if I would be interested in speaking uh, for a, a few moments on Bill 105. And, uh, I thought to myself, why would I really want to waste my breath on Bill 105? It's a, it's a sop to small business. And the answer actually is, I want to speak to it for that very reason, because all it is is a sop to small business. And since I spent a, a goodly number of years, uh, about 14, owning and operating my own small business, there, there is a place uh, for small business not only in the hearts and minds of the 85% of Ontarians who are employed by small business, earn their livings in small business, but also those of us who have had the fortune, sometimes misfortune, of being involved in small business and, and depending on the government to, more than anything else, create structures that allow us to operate freely, to make a buck, to be able to pay our employees, and to not be burdened with red tape uh, to the point where, um, where it, it snows us under. So I, I've got to say that, like many people in small business, I took something that was uh, tiny and built it not into a monster corporation, but into something that I could be proud of and that went from employing about 12 people to employing 120 people. So I fit right into the category that is primarily covered by Bill 105, the kind of, of company that didn't have a payroll in excess of $5 million, albeit there is something in there that addresses that issue, but one that did have a payroll in the millions of dollars that, uh, that looked to the exemption that, at the time I ran my business, didn't exist, but was brought in during that period by the, the Harris government of the Progressive Conservative Party. Uh, and that was a $400,000 exemption of the first $400,000 of annual payroll for the employer's health tax. And, uh, and that was welcomed. This bill wants to increase that next year by $50,000. And on the face of it, that sounds fine. And yes, I'll put myself on the record right now and say I'm going to vote for this because there's nothing that, that suggests that I shouldn't. Uh, it's harmless. But, but it, it is, at the same time, not particularly helpful. And that's where I want to focus my comments. Because if you take a look at the fact that, really, it is 85% of the province uh, that works in something called SMEs, small medium enterprises, uh, and, and therefore is involved in small business on an everyday basis, you want your small business to be in a position to be prosperous. What does an additional $50,000 exemption on employer health tax mean on the bottom line? And I've done the math, and the math is precisely $975. That's what happens at the end of the day when you apply the additional $50,000 if you're in one of the approximately 60,000 qualifying companies. Now, if you have a payroll that's somewhere in the $400,000 to $450,000 per annum or up to $5 million, which is inclusive, uh, the $975 is never going to be the difference between whether you stay in business or go out of business. It's just not enough money. In fact, if I want to be really honest about it, the $975, if it drops to the bottom line, is then subject to 11.5% income tax. So it really is more like 850 disposable dollars. That's not enough that if you awarded it to yourself as the owner to take a bonus to take you and your significant other to Florida uh, and pay the airfare. So we're not talking about a heck of a lot of money. And, and so what does that mean? It means that at a cost of $5 million per year, the estimates given to us by the government that is putting this bill on the table, at a cost of $5 million per year, in the overall scheme of things, not a whole heck of a lot of money. It wants to take credit for doing something fantastic for small business. When it's not doing something that helps small business in any real way at all, and that's the problem that we've got. That's the problem that our party tries to address every single day. 
Uh, the legislation kind of exemplifies what's wrong with the government of the day. Um, we're looking as, as people who are trying to address the small business, indeed the large business situation, uh, at a government that seems to be paying no heed to hydro rates that are skyrocketing, to increases in the premiums paid for uh, WSIB, to taxes paid to the College of Trades, to outdated apprenticeship ratios, and to so much red tape that people even uh, with five or ten employees are snowed under trying to complete forms or go online and, and file returns on various different types of taxes or practices. Uh, and, and they get caught in that web. And for their trouble, they get a bill that comes through this Legislative Assembly that ultimately results in 975 gross, 850 net dollars per year in their pockets. And we're now into the sixth to seventh hour of debate on this thing. Uh, to, to put that in perspective, if you take you, Speaker, all of the members of provincial parliament who are here, the electricity that we're expending on these beautiful chandeliers in this august chamber, the cost to heat the building, the cost for the cleaners to come in here and do the carpets, the cost for the legislative security force that protects the building and allows debate to continue unfettered so we don't get uh, shouted down by angry citizens because I believe we would were they not there, and all of the other support staff that work here, I'm sure that the cost of this debate at this point has been in excess of $5 million. Sir? So that's the problem that we've got. So, well, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not the one who's proliferating the debate. So, so if, you got, if you guys on the other side want to keep on debating it, that's fine because this is a careless bill and a careless bill that doesn't even begin to address what it is that businesses actually need to succeed. What do they need? They need perhaps uh, accelerated depreciation. They need perhaps uh, a fix to how small business loans are dealt with at the banking level. Uh, they need certainly the reduction in red tape that I talked about. They need some kind of incentive to be able to increase employment. We watched the NDP prop up that government to create a youth employment program, and yet unemployment still runs the highest in the land, save for PEI, uh, that, that exists. And now that, that's for, what, five to six years. So, so the bottom line is what we're dealing with in this bill is a public relations ploy. And what's it, what's it there for? It's to occupy our time, and those of you who are watching me on television and the rest of us, to occupy occupy your time to take your minds off of the fact that we have just finished uh, uh, an exercise where the Auditor General has told us that we have spent $1.1 billion on gas plants that were not wanted in the end, were half-built. $1.1 billion that they threw down the drain. What? To pave the way so that we could debate a bill that they're going to spend $5 million on to stimulate small business. People. I'm talking to you, Liberals, if you really want to stimulate small business, see how much of an attack you get from this side for spending a billion dollars doing that and five million to stop gas plants. But it's, it's in reverse. It's in reverse, Speaker, and it applies on a number of levels. We talk about gas plants, but we could be talking about e-health. We could be talking about orange. We could be talking about all of these things that in the parlance of this place have turned out to be boondoggles in the sense of, of actually administering the people's money in the proper way. That's, that's what this bill really underscores for me. So what I'd like to see, I'd like to see is a legitimate plan on the part of this government, the kind that was discussed in question period this morning by our leader, Tim Hudak, by our finance critic, uh, Mr. Fideli, uh, the, the concept of giving us an overall approach to how we create jobs in this province, not by dribs and drabs of under $1,000 per year of, of uh, largesse on the part of this government for 60,000 small businesses, but a paving of the way for those small businesses to grow and develop and become large businesses by getting opportunities that the government puts in place by getting itself out of the way. Speaker, thank you Questions very much. Questions and comments? I return to the member for Thornhill.
Thank you very much, Speaker, and uh, thank you too to my colleagues from Beaches East York. And I, I must say that I too will miss our friendly uh, debates, sometimes rivalry and sometimes arm-in-arm uh, -in -arm, uh, embraces uh, in the uh, Standing Committee on Finance. But you're right, uh, you never know. Uh, I never say never. Uh, the member from Ottawa South, we haven't really engaged before other than to say hello in the halls. You also have a background in small business, and so I know you understand, but I don't think it behooves you to stand in this legislature and take credit for the HST and expect any great sympathy from the folks out there. Uh, my, my friend from Durham always has nice things to say about me, so I'll leave that one alone. And to my friend from Kitchener-Waterloo, what, what I have to say to you is, uh, you can't you can't point your finger over there and talk about bad government at the same time as as saying that you're going to continue to play ball to make things better. It just doesn't work. So let me let me uh, conclude. I have 60 seconds left by giving you an example. When I had my uh, small business, my payroll it was a very payroll intensive business. Was about $250,000 per month. We billed. Uh, for our services, so I was out 250,000, or more correctly, the bank credit line was before I ever billed. Then it was net 30-day billing. So if everybody paid on time, I was at $500,000 before I ever saw dollar one. Now, if you take 3%, the employer health tax, you multiply that. Um, uh, you get $15,000 by two months, take a sixth of that, which is two months is a sixth of the year, that's $2,500 cost to the bank, and I, get, and I get to pay that every two months. So it's six times 12, five, it's $15,000 per year, and I'm getting back $975. That's my quick math lesson. So small business needs benefits, but this is too little, too late. Thank you, Speaker.